So, because because or, or did you start secular? Or? Well, listen. Um, I think I like the question that you're asking because here's the thing. For me, there was never a delineation between this is this is gospel or this is secular. It was all one big, uh -huh. the same. It was a similar continuation because I would be singing. Uh, we would go to church and then after church come and listen to Handel's Messiah. Yeah. Go to church and then whatever. So my mom would take us to church. But I had a very early experience with getting born again when I got born again. Mrs. Roberts, this Scottish missionary, would come to our school and do what we call Bible Club. And so one day she said, um, how many of you would like to get born again? And, you know, and you know, I was even too scared to put my hand up. But then I prayed the prayer, and from then on, I, I knew something had happened to me internally. So you can imagine that this is, I must have been eight or nine, about the same time. And then our neighbors, my neighbor, immediate neighbor on one side, Willie Marega was a DJ. So you can imagine, so I couldn't escape the music. Yeah. So here I was as a kid growing up with a Christian experience, going to Bible studies and everything, but my neighbor was a DJ and going to gigs and playing. And so his collection became my collection. Mm -hmm. So he's got Cameo, he's got uh, Mangelepa, but mainly R&B hits of the late 70s, early 80s. And so everything, um, I knew all the songs. I mean, we got Prince uh, and of course MJ, um, everything to do with breakdance and what yeah. have you. So you can imagine this, you know, people now talk about old songs and say, uh, I know that. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know from Otis Redding. Yes, uh, that's and what you grew up listening. Exactly. You know, like the to men. My, <laughs> right, uh, those kids from yesterday. Yeah, exactly. So my, my daughter did something to me yesterday. She played me a song. The first line of the introduction, I said, I know that song. I think that sounds like Eddie Rabbit, 1981. And the song is, do you like piña coladas? Because that's what I grew up on. Yes. And she's just discovering this stuff. And uh, I, my, so my experience had been that there was no, uh, to me is this, the dichotomy that a lot of people have of having secular music on this side and then gospel music on this side, like they're two opposing things. For me, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a reality in my mind. However, in my environment, mm -hmm. my environment had a very clear delineation. There was Christian music and Christian musicians sang choir music. Because if you remember at that time, um, no, the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> gospel music, if you had anything called gospel music, you had, uh, Mwanza Town Choir, Jericho AIC Choir, and, and maybe Mary Atieno, uh, and maybe um, there were the Kasangas who were singing on TV at the time, those yeah. joy bringers, that's it. Now, thank you very much, and uh, we would like to take a break now and ask John uh, Ndungu, who also happens to have been in the disco world, uh, but gave his life to Christ, and we'd like to ask him at this time to sing this song Johanna in his mother tongue about the death of John the Baptist and you see the death of John the Baptist is different from the death of Jesus Christ he was beheaded while Jesus was hung on the cross he went there willingly to die for your sin and for my sin so welcome John Dunn Is there physical CDs or LPs by local CDs? I mean, also, Sorry. No, no, definitely not CDs. But are there CDs is modern. Are there what tapes or LPs for local Kenyan? The only local Kenyan are the people that I've just said to you. 
that's the gospel industry. That was the gospel music industry. Maybe a little bit afterwards came uh, Munishi. Uh, but if you're talking about contemporary gospel music, yes. nada. What you had is Jafet Kasanga. Whoa. That was modern. Kasanga and his wife were on TV and they were singing uh, those songs back then. Um, of course now there was little pockets of people who sang songs. Now that's when I met uh, Achenga Bura, uh, who came from wherever she was and she had one song because I believe in the gospel and she believed in the gospel and I was hearing something I said yeah that's kind of what I want to do and then you had um, uh, Kwame Rubadiri and Kwame Rubadiri, Kwame Rubadiri was, uh, Jack Odongo were all in a group called the gospel sound who now were at Nairobi Baptist Church and I saw them and I said these guys these guys, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. But you know, now Jack was there. These guys were like there. I couldn't reach them. And I was just saying, oh my goodness. So they did this thing um, one, one Christmas or I, one event and I watched them. It was televised. I said, this is something that I want to do. And that was my first exposure to a modern gospel, cool anything. Mm -hmm. Because here was Jack Odongo producer extraordinaire. This is like uh, a modern day Sedo, but now with pizzazz. <laughs> hey, Pastor you know? Pete, even though Sedo, you are with him. Sedo's in my, he's, that, he's the girl who comes to our church. What are you talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so Sedo's my boy. He's my boy. He's your peeps, man. Yeah, he's my Sedo, peeps. for those who don't know, is the one who produced Nyashinsky. Sauti, so, Nyashinsky. And many others. And many others. So it's like, I mean, so this is, to me, and you know him, Sedo's invisible. You know, you don't see him in public. Yeah. But now Jack was on TV and everything. And I was in awe because there he was in, in like um, Crown Paints ad. And he was playing the piano. I said, this guy, this, this guy. Is what time? This is the I was now in my teens. Yes, this is mid 80s. 86, yeah. 86, exactly. I was, so in, I was in my teens in the mid 80s. And, and the only TV station we have is KTN, KBC, is NTV. VOK <laughs> is one. You had two channels. On or off? <laughs> That's it. Your TV was either on it was, or it was off. It, was, it wasn't even called KBC. It was the v Voice of Kenya. And it used to start at what time? Four o'clock in the evening. So content, the only time you could get content was... It was two PM. gospel programs, um, with the Furaha family, and um, that was uh, two gospel programs. One was on Sunday. There was Joybringers and Sing and Shine. The only two... Christian programs anywhere, once a week. Whoa. So you watch Joybringers, which is the Furaha family, which is uh, a program about a, a Christian family that did things and sang songs. Now, and the truth is this, it was a fantastic effort that was early, but everybody hated it. I hated that <laughs> program because it was like super boring because it showed this cheesy Christian family. They weren't cool. They were good Christians. They didn't dress fashionably because you really need to understand. I'm not knocking what they were doing. What I am saying though is that they needed to be a presence of some gospel message and he was it, you know. Uh, and, then, and then there was Sing and Shine, which is where you'd see the Acheng Abura, Peter Wandera, and maybe somebody else at that time. Uh, and in watching this thing, I said, you know, something has to be done. And so there's this tussle in me because the only music I can actually listen to because uh, there was nothing that was, I mean, what can compete with Michael Jackson at that time? Just this is thriller! And there's nobody, we're not even dancing. So forget dancing. You couldn't dance in church. In fact, you Whoa. couldn't, women couldn't wear braids and trousers and go on stage. They weren't allowed. I'm talking about in Nairobi Baptist. I'm talking about the most forward looking, completely juiced up church, had problems sometimes with women wearing, you couldn't wear jeans and sing on Sunday and wear jeans. It had to be uh, Long dress. trousers, a dress yeah. or trousers. If you wore trousers, and sometimes and some, people break, some people would break the rules, some people would break the rules for the women. So now you imagine, here I was, I decided to get a, an earring, a stud. I got two in the, 80s. In the mid 80s. 
my pastor freaked out. No, 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 Peter, you don't wear, boys don't wear earrings. It was, but I said, but they do, you just have, you're just not exposed. Yeah. And then, oh, to make it worse, I said, let me get some braids. Oh my <laughs> goodness. These guys are now Satanists. So in the mid 80s. I love, I love, hold on, I love what you're saying. Right. You know, fashion comes back, yeah? You know what guys are doing now with the braids? No, no, no. <laughs> Been there, done, Been there that. done that, bought the t-shirt, <laughs> written the book. Fashion, fashion and trends just keep going round. Right. Keep going round. Yeah. Keep going round. Yeah. Okay, I want I want to see now the introduction of of but if there's something you feel like you, you need to Sure. Say. So I'm 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 just getting there. So so I'm in high school, I'm kinda confused. Should I be a secular musician? Should I be a gospel musician? I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm guessing. And Jonah Uzele. And that was one of the bands that was existent at the time. So they were a traveling family who played music. These guys were amazing singers and musicians. And Jonah called me when he was doing his, uh, starting out his solo project. He said, I'd like you to be a drummer in my, in my band. Mr. Pete, you were so good at drumming that he was calling you to be a drummer. A drummer. Maybe there were no other drummers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this was self-taught. Yeah. You know, I don't know Pastor Pete the drummer. Yeah. That's why I'm well, shocked. People don't, know, <laughs> people don't know Pastor Pete the drummer. Okay. So here I was playing drums, and then he needed a male vocal. So I was playing drums and singing. So this is uh, Phil Collins, Pete Phil Collins Odera. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we do. And, and we just go around churches and schools doing, doing this stuff. And Jonah was cool. And they taught me how to sing. I could sing. I, was, I think I was a pretty good singer. But the Uzeles had a vocal sound that was amazing, amazing. They were, they taught me, he taught me about vibrato. And it's not like he sat down and said, now this is how, no, I listened. I listened. And this was exposure. Now listen, you know how you say I went and played drums? We weren't getting paid because there was no money in Christian music back then. There was no money. So you know how people say, I won't come to your church unless you do. I say, man, I laugh. <laughs> this is hilarious to me. He said, you don't want, you want money for this thing? And, and people would actually, if you ever ask for money, and the Uzellas were the first band that I ever heard that wanted an honorarium for what they did, because this is what they did full time. So I didn't know that musicians did, first of all, that you could be a gospel musician, and that you could be a gospel musician full time. I knew that you, you could be a, at Jack Odongo, do uh, production and advertising. Mm -hmm. Jack Odongo, of course, you know, is the famous Jazz Odongo's father. Yeah. And I mean, I sang at their wedding. We watched them get married. We saw Jazz being born. <laughs> and with Zam. This, and Zam. And, and, <laughs> and being asked to eat when they didn't want to eat. So like, oh Lord, mm -hmm. X-Files. <laughs> And we were around gospel sound, so he was Victoria, the Victoria Rubidiri as a two, three-year-old kid running around the stage as well. What? And so we'd go to um, uh, Transworld Radio where both Vicky's parents were uh, working as journalists at uh, Transworld Radio. So um, I, I say this because I just need to paint a picture of the outlets that we had. You know, people now have, in Nairobi alone, there's like, I don't know how many FM stations. Yes. Um, remember I said on or off? On or off, KBC. TV, TV yeah. VOK, and then uh, it became KBC, uh, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. And then there was, um, and then there was uh, radio, there was AM radio, and then you had uh, shortwave radio which is where Transworld would broadcast. So Kwame would do a weekly program, one or two programs on radio. And then uh, I would, uh, uh, they would do this. And so, you know, you go and visit and maybe they do an interview of the upcoming gospel artist. So we had this band in church. I'm doing this band thing, but I've got the bug because the songs that they were doing is, they're nice, but they don't have the edge I had this. I had I had a crazy idea in my teenage mind that if I will write cool songs and put pop beats and really cool beats into these songs, that young people would actually fall in love with Jesus. I didn't come into music to be a musician and to be a whatever. I said music is my tool because I was trained as a graphic artist. Music is my tool. I have to make a decision. I'm going to be a musician. 
the question was who how many people who would i reach who would be a, um what would be a better tool to reach my generation graphic arts or or um music hands down music one music was the more powerful genre at the time so i said okay so somewhere in my late teens i made a decision that i was going to pursue music can you give me a, a, about what what when is this 19 okay right about there around 1990 1990 so around 88 so i sat for my a levels and went to college i started doing graphic arts so i was writing songs being in this band writing songs at the same time and i was writing songs that the group would find this so we had a bit of a reunion in Houston last year i went to see one of the members uh, uh, eric and his wife mikalo in the band and so we were sitting down at breakfast and, and so we were reminiscing some of the old days and she said she said something said you were such an insister you were always always we practice this and you'd always sing something different and it was funny i said what was she said what was wrong with you we were laughing about it but this was the thing the stuff that i wanted to do they didn't do because i wanted to do things with a little more edgy a uh, little bit, that you could play in a club mm. they want to play in a club they wanted to be a church group so i want a music that would bang in the clubs <laughs> you know that you play in the car and somebody say what is that i wanted to throw in some rap in this funky i wanted rap in the music i wanted reggae music and thing and you know and but those strings and so i mean they were creative i mean no i triumph was a very creative band i'm i'm yet to see another band in my life and that was as creative as triumph was we wrote a whole lot of music and stuff that was just incredible i must say um but but i wanted to not just do incredible musical stuff i wanted to do cutting edge stuff that would reach the young people and so i made a decision to leave the band and i did a justin timberlake a michael jackson and a beyonce and says um i'm going to leave you people and do my solo project 